Okay, we are live. Hello, everyone. Can you hear us? Can you see us? Hello. Welcome. How welcome. is everyone doing today? Hi. <laughs> Question for the chat right off the bat. What is your intro phrase when you start your stream? For me personally, it's always <laughs> going to be, can you see me? Can you hear me? You always got to do the double check, right? I always go like, hi, and like I do a peace sign or like, hi, or I usually actually, I usually start zoomed in and I'm like, hello. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my move. <laughs> okay. So what are we doing today? Brito, do you want to kick us off? What are we talking about? Yes. <clears throat> well, welcome everybody. First of all, I hope you all are having a wonderful week. Uh, you may have seen in the chat, uh, if you are putting FC MK2, uh, joining that giveaway for Facecam Mark II, that today we're talking about Facecam Mark II. And actually, as you're looking at us right now, you're seeing Facecam Mark II. Um, this, is, this is not a DSLR. <laughs> which is crazy. Um, we're talking about Facecam Mark II, and we're also talking about Camera Hub 1.9 today. Uh, so make sure to start putting your questions in the chat. We'll be queuing them up. But first, we're going to start by just kind of talking a little bit about what's new in Mark II versus the original Facecam, which we actually launched all the way back in 2021. So a lot has changed since then. And we've made a lot of improvements based on your feedback on Facecam. Uh, so I don't, I don't think we even introed ourselves. I mean, I'm usually, you're usually here. I'm usually not. So hello. You usually see me in chat. I'm Brito. Um, I'm the community marketing manager at Twi uh, Twitch. Oh my God. Oh God. Oh, oh at Twitch. Okay. All right. <laughs> sorry, Phil. I, I had right. to. Uh, sorry, I had to tell you like this. <laughs> As Very you see, cool. I'm normally. I, I was going to say I'm normally in Twitch chat, but now I'm on the stream. So yes, I work awesome. at Elgato. I promise. <laughs> awesome to have you. And uh, I'm <laughs> Phil. Hey everyone. How's it going? I think I've been here a couple of times. If you've been here before, you will probably know me. I'm on the tech marketing team and I'm excited to talk to you about uh, Facecam Mark II, which we just launched and Camera Hub and all the awesome improvements that uh, have come with that update. Now, I wanna preface this by saying that we are doing, you, you might notice a couple other changes, by the way, besides having Brito here, you might notice that actually all the other stuff going on is a little bit new as well. So, uh, Brito, Jasmine, Jasmine is usually the host. Uh, she uh, did a fantastic job working with the team on updating our stream graphics. So uh, they look fantastic. Let us know what you think. That This is also the first time we're using them and we're doing a lot of kind of cool stuff with it. If it breaks, hey, we're doing it live. So yeah, yeah. also <laughs> it's currently like 8 p.m. in Germany. Uh, I'm in our Munich office. This setup I just built today. So we basically had nothing here, nothing ready uh, in this particular room that I'm in. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be good. So with yeah. that being said, what else do we have? Okay. I think we should show the the trailer, but also I do want to preface that if my quality seems a little off, uh, well, Phil's all the way in Germany and I'm not, I am, uh, I'm in the Bay area, so I'm calling in. So my quality from his stream may be, you know, not fresh out of the camera. So, uh, just, just noting that, cause I did see someone in the chat say I looked a little grainy and that's, I, I blame my internet for that personally. <laughs> That's probably, yeah, the internet. So, all right, with that being said, we're here to talk about Facecam Mark II. So let's take a quick look at the trailer and then dive right into it. All right, and we are back. So that was the trailer for Facecam Mark II. And uh, I've got one right here, actually. I don't know if you can see it. Yep, there it is. Uh, and both Brito and I are using it. Uh, so yeah, what's new with, uh, with Facecam Mark II? Well, the first, so Facecam Mark II, uh, kind of like it says in the name, is a iteration on our extremely popular Facecam. When we launched Facecam back in 2020, it was immediate hit with you guys. Um, and you know we wanted to take what we did with Facecam Mark One or the original one and just build on that. And so it's got a couple really, really nice improvements that kind of take it right up to the next level or turn it up to 11. Um, so 
We'll go through those one by one. And uh, the first one is going to be HDR. Uh, so this is something that uh, you might have heard before as a term being used. And HDR is uh, also I'm seeing someone saying I'm kind of low. I'm quiet. All right, hold up. Let me see. I'm quiet. OK, we can do this. Yeah, you just got to like enunciate and yell into the microphone. <laughs> OK, how's that? Am Maybe I I'm yelling now? too much. That, that could also be, I could turn Brito down. That way you guys can turn, uh, you know, there we go. I'll turn, I'll turn myself back up. <laughs> yeah, to compensate. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Yeah. Now we, we've balanced it out a little bit more. Uh, so yeah, HDR, right? Uh, HDR is a um, kind of a technology that is coming with Facecam Mark II. And what it does is it essentially takes, it's, it's called high dynamic range. And essentially what happens is the camera takes two images or two pictures right um, now at 60 frames a second and it combines them and with that you get a output of well basically those two merged images now what's special about those two images is one of them is at a lower exposure and so basically what happens is with a lower exposure uh bright highlights something like you know if you have a light on you and you sometimes see it like clipping a little bit or getting a little bit too bright uh, those will look better and then it takes a second image and it actually bumps up the exposure. And so things like shadows, you know, like on this like black t-shirt here, those will get super crisp and uh, look really good. And what it does is it then takes those two images and it literally like merges them together. And so you get kind of the best of both worlds. You get really, really great low light performance. You get really, really good, basically really bright performance. And if you're in extreme situations where, for example, behind you, you have a window, that window will look you know, normal, you can probably see the sky and all of that while your face and you also look normal. Um, and that's kind of what HDR does. And now I said earlier that, you know, it's, <clears throat> it's doing taking these two images and getting you a 60 FPS output. What that means on the camera side is that it is actually running at 120 frames per second inside the camera, more or less, right? Because you're taking two images, uh, one at that lower exposure, one at that higher exposure, merging them, and then you get that final output of 60 FPS. So that's what HDR is. And uh, we can actually take a quick look at what the, um, kind of how that looks when I use it here. Oh, there we go. I'm just gonna switch over. Uh, so I'm actually currently in the standard dynamic range. And why I'm saying that is because HDR isn't necessarily the end all be all, right? It's a, it's a setting that's lower. You know, usually if you look at like off, low, medium, high, something like that, you tend to just go, oh yeah, I want high, I want the best. Um, but it really kind of depends. In the setup that I'm in, HDR is really not needed. I've got a couple lights in front of me here. I've got minimal to almost no lighting behind me uh, to get that dramatic effect. And that's pretty much it. I'm actually just in standard dynamic range. Now let's kick it over to high dynamic range and actually take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so here I am in high dynamic range. So you can see it's changed the image a little bit. Um, it looks similar. It looks, you know, there's a little bit more on the dark side, but I don't actually think I need this. I can also bump it up and you'll see there's a little bit more detail in some of the darker areas. And in fact, even the contrast could be improved a little bit, you could say. Um, but me personally, I like the standard setting here. So I'm gonna turn that down. There we go. And I'm back to normal. So yeah, that's uh, that's HDR. Basically, it just, it lets you use Facecam Mark II in more extreme settings. And in certain cases, it also makes it so that you just look better though. Um, and it's, you know, you really kind of want to experiment around with it. In fact, I almost wish Brito that you had behind yeah. you open that window because then you could demo no. it really well. <laughs> Don't look out my window. I'm, I'm just in a void. There's nothing outside that window, but I do want to show the example we have on the website, which is a perfect version of, you know, seeing that HDR in effect. Um, here you can see, you know, that when HDR is on, it's really able to take those really, really bright areas, lower them, and then also bring those dark areas and be able to basically give you that like perfect image where everything is balanced uh, because it's taking both that, you know, higher exposed image so you don't lose the blacks and also that lower exposed image that you don't lose the bright uh, colors in your image. So I think this is a, a great example on this website, uh, on our website about how HDR works and how, how that end result you can get. Yeah. So HDR is kind of the first and foremost, the, the, like one of the biggest features. Uh, the second is the built-in, uh, privacy shutter, which when we launched the Go original, <laughs> whoa, wait, what? <laughs> oh, uh, that was a live demo. Yeah, there you go. So with the original face cam, uh, 
I wasn't. I didn't actually see the screen, so I didn't know what you're showing. On the original face cam, uh, we had a sh a privacy cap that you could remove. And now, listen, between you and me, we know it wasn't exactly ideal. You know, it's kind of hard to take off. It's kind of annoying to put on. It's easy to lose, right? You can kind of put it away, uh, and then you might forget it somewhere like that. Perfect. I lost mine. <laughs> I, oh no! <laughs> uh, and now with the face cam Mark II, you can simply close the privacy shutter uh, and. It's it's basically integrated right into the camera. Rito can give you a live demo there. So if you want, you know, if you're done streaming and you want to make sure that absolutely no one and nothing is able to see what you're doing, you can simply close it and then you can open it again. So that's really nice. If you want to have a look at uh, what that looks like, I've got it kind of set up here. You can see I'm going to hold it up for the camera. <laughs> you can like do a reveal. I just realized we should we should do something for that. We should do some sort of reveal. But yeah, I mean, I the this is like my honestly one of my favorite things about Mark II because I am very much the person that like if I'm in the room with my computer, I'm like, okay, the webcam is is covered or like my camera lens is on. The my my mic is red. I see I see the muted. There's no other microphone or video that could be going through. I'm very much about like I need it to be covered. Even if I'm like at my desk and or I'm like using my laptop and I don't have something covering the camera, I I will think about it and I will feel uncomfortable so i really it's really easy to see when this one's closed i mean phil can show you has that nice little elgato logo on it so i think this is like a huge improvement because we definitely heard you know your feedback on the initial cover for mark one that it well as you take it off you know you kind of move the camera sometimes or it's hard to like snap it in the right way or you know like phil was saying you can lose the cover uh so i do really like this uh integrated cover and you can just really quickly just you want some extra privacy just flip it over or be like me and just trust you know i always shut down my computer when i'm done with everything <laughs> so i have trust now will that get me into hot water one day uh, probably possibly but hey <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah that's the integrated privacy shutter a really really again nice quality of life change there uh next up is pan tilt zoom and so i think this one i can actually show you guys live check this out me too uh, there we go so this is camera hub here uh and this is actually the I mean, you're seeing the setup that I'm using to stream. Uh, you can also see room, full screen, everything. And there's now uh, framing options for the face cam Mark II. So you can simply you know, zoom in here, but even within that, I can kind of adjust the, the framing here if I want to. So if I wanna make it a little more personal like this, right? Like, hey guys, how's it going? You know, I can have it, I can do a little bit of a dramatic effect. So for example, if I go a little bit, zoom in here, uh, press and hold. And now I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, press and hold. And now I could kind of, as I'm talking, switch between, you know, sometimes like they do in documentaries or even like during, you know, editing, you can kind of cut in between stuff if you're live, kind of like you would uh, during editing. Uh, you could do this with the Facecam Mark II and those PTZ controls, which is really cool. Um, in addition to that, and this is something that launched together with Camera Hub 1.9, is face tracking. So because of that PTZ capability, uh, you also now have the ability to enable face tracking if you have an NVIDIA RTX GPU. So with this, you can simply zoom in a little bit. Uh, let's go there. And now I can kind of walk over there, walk over here. We can have a conversation, get really animated, like, whoa, oh my gosh, I you know, want to make sure that I'm always in frame. And hey, it's going to keep me centered right then and there uh, by tracking my face. So. Uh, that is face tracking, again, powered by an NVIDIA uh, AR effect. So you'll need an NVIDIA RTX GPU and RTX 2060 or better uh, for that. But yeah, so you can also enable that. Again, that kind of comes together with that PTZ as well. So uh, really, really nice little change there. And, and again, that's enabled by kind of the quality difference that you see. I mean, this is 1080p60 video, which I don't think we actually mentioned that yet, but it's a 1080p60 webcam but it looks really, really clean. And we'll also get into more details about why it looks so clean. Um, oh, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> to, to show off the, the zoom effect, I, I was waiting for you, Phil. Yep. <laughs> you, got, you got that zoom. I unfortunately can, don't have like a just... cool sound effect for that. Imagine if you could oh like God, tie God, a yeah. sound effect to it. Yeah. Or just make your you own. You can also control that with a stream deck as well. So that's another really cool feature. Um, but yeah, those uh, presets are really nice. You can just have, I have this zoom already made, or I can even do something like save. If you see that, that's an, an original SpongeBob cell, by the way. Just if I wanted to show that off on my stream, be like, oh, what? 
what what what's what's that back there oh thanks for asking it's just my original spongebob cell uh and you can kind of do that with anything if you have like a pet bed maybe in the back uh maybe if i if i just call these little plushies in the corner let's say i have a cat and let's say that's my cat sleeping in the corner and he's always in that corner you can just save that preset the way phil was showing and then you can always just in the middle of your stream press the stream deck key or something and boom now now that's what chat's really here for is the pet cam so let's be honest they can get their pet cam I also do see, I see a question coming up a couple times in chat, Phil, uh, about your background and why your background is blurred and mine isn't. That is a great question. So yes, I am using a, a background blur effect. In fact, I can kind of, uh, I can show you guys here. Let me uh, move that back over here. So uh, I can go over to the effects tab and this is within Camera Hub, our uh, companion application to Facecam Mark II. And you can see I've got blur enabled here. And then I have a strength slider as well. And I can simply turn that up. And now this is like hyper blurred. This does not look realistic at all. Or I can turn it down. Uh, this is great for you know giving yourself that DSLR like look without actually needing one. And uh, it works fantastic with Facecam Mark II, again, because of that video quality. Um, you can tell it's even blurring the mic arm that, that I have set up here in a somewhat semi-realistic way, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is again powered by NVIDIA uh, broadcast effects. So you will need an NVIDIA RTX 2060 GPU or better for that. Um, but it's not just background blur, which you can use. Uh, there's also uh, background replacement. So this is actually just an image now. And again, wow, that that is pretty clean looking. Of course, it's black on white, so it's a little bit, you know, you can see every every little uh, like issue there where it doesn't quite get it. Get it. Uh, but in a scene like this, it looks fantastic. Uh, and there's even moving background. So for example, if I wanna be in a news station, like, hello everyone, how's it going? I'm Phil, and tonight's big news is that we launched Facecam Mark II. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta get the, the news reporter voice like, Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Elgato uh, Channel 7. Today, we're covering Facecam Mark II. Phil, can you give us a little bit more insight <laughs> about what's new? <laughs> there you yeah, go. thanks, Burrito. Yeah, so I'm <laughs> out here right now presenting Facecam Mark II with this incredible background. And I know there's kind of an audio delay on our uh, wireless system here, but you know it's looking absolutely fantastic. But yeah, <laughs> you guys get the point, right? <laughs> it's always that delay. Um, so yeah, you can do uh, custom backgrounds. There's some that we include. Uh, if you wanna be in a tavern in a coffee shop here, you can do that. Or you can of course just add your own if you want to. So really, really nice. Um, and there's also a there's uh, eye contact for if you're not using prompter. So I am using prompter right now. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that. Uh, you know, I'm looking at you and Anna, I'm reading chat. Um, if I weren't using prompter, uh, I can use uh, eye contact. And again, I think we should, we'll, we'll talk about Camera Hub in a little bit. We can go back, we can, you know, we have some other things to talk about there around prompter as well. Um, but oh, for now, uh, we can, oh, uh, hello, hello, hello. Am I still hello. around? Quick cut over to Brito. Hi. Okay, so um, yeah, I got, I got my cover back while Phil was talking. I have recovered it from being behind me. Uh, but a couple other things that are pretty neat. Let's actually just run through the website for Facecam Mark II real quick. Um, I have, uh, you can see a comparison. I want to show you because the build itself is also different for Mark II. So the original Facecam had a bit of a more squared shape. And then it also had a monitor mount that brought it a bit like a, like an inch or so off your monitor. These are things that you gave us feedback on, especially that monitor mount, that it was too high depending on your setup. So we went ahead and fixed that with Mark II. Now the stand is a bit more like Facecam Pro, where it's closer to your monitor, gives you that closer eye contact. I mean, you'll see on uh, on my camera, I really have that, you know, it's basically exactly at my eye level. I like doing a little bit above my eye level and my monitor is not even too low so that to like compensate for it. So that updated monitor mount is also something that's new in Facecam Mark II. Um, it's also got that, oh, I got to refresh because I, I was resizing this website. <laughs> um, yeah, so the other cool thing is not all 1080p video is made the same and you'll see huge improvements on the video quality uh, in Facecam Mark II. I mean, I will, I will tell you a, a personal anecdote, which is that I, when I connected my Mark II for the first time, because I'm actually, it's, it's, let me, let me 
show you wow look at this video on the website guys we should we we should all give feedback that this is the coolest video on the website uh, but yes when i was setting up to film uh this asset for the website i actually thought that i was putting my panasonic camera feed through i did not realize that i like the mark ii was already like running on obs and i was going to change it and i was like oh this is mark ii that was the first time i'd ever hooked it up i was i i genuinely thought that it was my panasonic camera uh so yeah the the 1080p 60 is you know if you're looking for 4k to record 4k videos that's one thing but if you're streaming usually you're not going to stream in 4k anyways um I also did see someone in chat ask about what platforms support HDR streaming. I think YouTube added that recently, Phil. You can correct me uh, if I'm wrong there. But for me, yes. 1080 <laughs> is all I record and stream these days. If I'm recording a YouTube video, I'll have a, a usually a camera like in the Elgato office. Uh, but for streaming and stuff, 1080 is all I stream. So I literally thought I was using, I was previewing my camera because the colors were so much better than Mark One. I, I, I was, I was, I was shook. And then even like this, like when you see stuff like my Elgato light in the background, like the way that it it's not like overblown is so different than any other webcam I've used before. So yeah, I just, you know, I wanted to share my, my anecdote where I was a little confused. Um, but yeah, to keep running through the website real quick. Um, yes, that 60 FPS means that you can actually slow down your video about half speed and get a really smooth slow-mo. Uh, I don't think it actually shows in slow-mo here. We have it in the trailer in slow-mo. Uh, I so think you can even do YouTube. technically 120 FPS, yes. right? Well, thank you, Phil. Yes. So I was going to say that if you're if you're uh, streaming or recording with 720p, you can go up to that 120 FPS. So you can slow down even more. And I don't know if you've ever gotten slow-mo from a webcam, but that's that's pretty neat. And you can do some really cool effects with that. I've seen some people do like a, like a flashback moment where they'll like, you know, maybe they spilled their water and they can press a Stream Deck key and it'll play back like the last 30 seconds, you can get creative there. Maybe you play it back, back in slow-mo. Maybe you have a cat tree in the background and your cat just like yeeted itself off and, uh, you know, scurried away. You can see that, you know, like in like slow-mo or you're doing, uh, you do a confetti popper the way that I did on the website and you want to just replay that celebration moment or your reaction to like a fail in a, in a game or something. You can you could do some really creative effects when you have more than 30 FPS in your webcam. Uh, and this also applies to if you're recording YouTube videos, you can get those really unique slow-mo effects uh, in post and be able to have enough FPS that you can uh, slow down your video. So anyways, um, you also see just the really nice color. The color output on Mark II is like, Mwah. I, I am an artist, so like I see colors, you know, like I can really tell when something's off and it really bothers me. And just seeing how accurate the colors are on Mark II is like, it's it's just so beautiful and I love it so much. Uh, and it's it's also like, it's difficult to get stuff like skin, skin tones right. Um, so I'm pretty red right now. And that's actually what I look like <laughs> because before the stream, I was laughing for like 30 minutes. So I am, I'm looking in the mirror and I'm actually that red. <laughs> So if I look red, it's because I was laughing a lot earlier. Uh, but yeah, the skin tones and stuff is very accurate. Um, you can even see, uh, let me like, this is this is what this cup looks like. This is what it looks like. It's it's just nice. It's nice to have a camera that actually you know respects the true colors in your room. Uh, it's also really good with low light performance. Um, so actually, I want to want to do a little demo. I have my manual settings on right now. But if I turn off all my lighting, have you seen a webcam? have this detail before like it's actually like an insane amount of detail and also i didn't even anticipate it would have no noise but there's also like there's no significant amount of noise we should wearing, talk about that know, by the way because the yeah. noise reduction is uh something that actually that changed in the face cam mark ii um <clears throat> so yeah. By the way, uh, for a second there, I had no monitors. That was cool. Uh, we're back oh, now, though. I couldn't okay. see anything. Yeah, I just I was praying that <laughs> I was praying that That's everything was working. Yeah, like I said, new setup, set it up right beforehand. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at uh, the new noise reduction setting. So, like Brito mentioned, the noise performance is really good. Now, there's kind of two reasons for that. One is uh, the uh, just the tuning and uh, the new ISP that we have in there. Uh, so, image signal processor. And that enables uh, improved noise reduction algorithms. So what does that mean exactly? Because the original face cam also had noise reduction, right? 
Well, essentially you have a couple different settings now and I wanna walk through these in detail and they're gonna get slightly nerdy. So if you don't follow along, that's totally fine. Just know that, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll just go through it. So yeah, there's I'm off. Yeah, I'm gonna take a nap, Phil, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All good, enjoy. So first there's, there's off and uh, well, off is just off. And you know, I have a pretty good scene here, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just on purpose gonna bump up the ISO uh, so that you guys can see a little bit. There's some like noise now in my shirt, right? So that setting is off. The next setting is light. And light already does a decent job of getting uh, rid of some of the noise in the video. Again, I'm blowing this out on purpose. This is not what it normally looks like. This is just to show off the, uh, the new noise reduction feature. Um, now, this light setting, if you guys are gamers, uh, you'll, you might know this, but this uses spatial, basically a spatial noise reduction uh, algorithm. I almost said spatial. Uh, anti-aliasing, but it uses uh, spatial noise reduction. So basically what that means is it's uh, spatial, it's in space, it's taking a pixel, looks at a pixel next to it, looks at another pixel next to it, and uh, goes, okay, I think this is noise, I don't think this is noise, and you know, it's decent, it's fine, uh, but it doesn't really have a lot of information to work with. It just knows, okay, there's a couple pixels next to me, and this looks like there's, there's maybe some structure there, um, so this is noise and this isn't noise. Now we can move over to the medium setting. And medium, again, I don't know how well this is coming through. Uh, hopefully you can see it. But medium got rid of almost all the kind of the, the film grain, right? The noise in there. Uh, that's because the medium setting uses something called temporal noise reduction. Temporal being time. So essentially what's happening is the camera is taking multiple frames over time and checking what's different between the two, right? So if I were to stand completely still, there would actually be no noise because it knows, oh, okay, any pixel value that's changing, that's noise, you know, I can compensate and get kind of get rid of that and uh, leaves you with a really crisp image. It, as you're kind of moving around though, you know, it'll take multiple frames and it'll go, okay, that's noise, that's noise, that's noise and get rid of it. So that's medium. So medium is basically gonna give you like out of the box the best and that's what we are, uh, that's what we default to. And then lastly, there's high, and high is a combination of both. So high is a combination of spatial and temporal anti, uh, gosh, I keep calling it anti-aliasing, noise reduction, spatial and temporal noise reduction combined. So it gives you kind of the best of both. Now, what you what can happen is if you set it to high and you already have a really good image, like for example, if I set it back to my normal setting here, I don't really have a lot of noise anyways. My ISO is at 100, so I don't really need that high setting. In fact, the high setting might actually be smoothing over my image uh, a little bit. So I can actually go ahead and just set that back to, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna set that back to off. And off is gonna look great. However, I would generally always recommend having a little bit there, and that would be the medium setting. So the medium setting would be my, my recommendation. Even if you have a great video, just leave it on medium. It'll look great right out of the box. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit about noise reduction. You've got four settings, off, light, medium, and high. We recommend starting out with medium and uh, just kind of going from there. Hi, the high setting. The high setting <laughs> and then the hello yeah, setting. So I want to... <laughs> Take a moment and talk a little bit about the giveaway. And then we're going to jump into questions because Ooh. we have a lot of questions. Um, so first, I just wanted to mention, if you want to join our giveaway, it's only running on Twitch this time. So you have to make sure to go to twitch.tv slash Elgato uh, to join the giveaway. To join, all you have to do is type FCMK2. I said that pretty quick. I, I, you know, it's kind of like a little bit of a tongue twister. So, you know, I'm not, some kudos for that. Um, but yeah, type FC. Oh, my. Now I messed it up. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, just type FCMK2 in chat. Only have to type it once, and we're going to be drawing the winner at some point throughout the stream. And in order to claim your prize, you have to be in chat. So be sure to stick around uh, when we draw that winner. If you win and you are not in chat to claim it within a minute, then unfortunately, we'll have to move to the next winner. Uh, so, you know, we've done it before. We'll do it again. So <laughs> make sure that you're in chat. Um, I want to move over to questions, though, Phil, because we have a lot. Uh, so I'm just going to go through some of the quicker questions first, which is Cherry asks, what does MK stand for? Uh, so it's like face cam mark two. It's just the second version it doesn't stand for anything other than that. Um, so I guess it's like, that's... I mean, it's the, I think what MK is the abbreviation for Mark. Yes. And Mark, mm -hmm. kind of, yeah, just signifies not if there's anyone in chat named Mark, by the way, you're awesome. But yeah, um, MK is Mark or just Mark two or version yes. two. And then just to say again, Talkin is asking, Phil, how are you getting that shallow depth of field on your background? That's the NVIDIA effect on Camera Hub. Uh, so 
you can talk a little bit about that. I can also turn it off. So now it's off. Uh, you can see, and I guess we should also mention that. I don't think we have. Uh, Facecam Mark II, just like the original Facecam, is a fixed focus uh, webcam. So what that means yes. is the focus uh, is, well, literally fixed. It's static, so it doesn't change. So it, I'm in kind of that optimal range right now. I think it's 30 to 110 centimeters, which is, I mean, you can see even the background behind me is pretty clear, um, but it's already starting to blur a little bit. And I'm about, boy, uh, even though I'm in Europe, I don't have the European measurement. Uh, <laughs> it's like, I'm like three feet away from it right now something like that um, in chat. You guys can do the math real quick. I can't do it in my head. Uh, and yeah, it looks fantastic. So it's fixed focus. It's not, there's not going to be any like focus hunting. Uh, it looks really great. If that's about a meter, then yeah, that's yeah. Three feet is about a meter. Exactly. Um, so yeah, no, yeah. that's uh, it's a fixed focus. And again, I have the background blur off right now. Actually, uh, maybe I can switch over quickly so you can see here uh, what it kind of looks like. Looks really nice. And um, yeah, and then I'll just go ahead and turn it back on. And a little pro tip, by the way, if you guys are using the background blur, uh, and I don't know the r full reasons for this, but just set it to 0%. And I find 0% looks the most natural, right? If you set it even to something like, uh, I don't know, 20%, it starts getting a little bit, you can tell there, where the edges are and stuff like that. It starts to look a little unnatural. Set that to zero, mm, crisp, looks great. Cool. So uh, we have a question and they directed this one to you. So I'm sending this one straight to you. Okay. Wheezy asks, Phil, is this USB 3.0, 3.1 or 3.2? Bam, teed me up. Uh, this is going to be 3.0. So yeah, this is going to be. And. Uh, yeah. And. 3.0. Type C. And USB 2.0. Did I get it right? Ah! <laughs> Lottery winner. Okay, so yeah, Facecam Mark II out of the box. Uh, we recommend using USB 3.0. Uh, you know, you'll get the best quality out of it because it does offer uncompressed video, just like the original Facecam. So that way, yeah, you'll just get the best uh, the best video quality out of it. However, uh, you can also use it on USB 2.0 ports. If you do use it on a USB 2.0 port, uh, it will use the MJPEG video codec, which, in the grand scheme of things, is not that big of a deal, but. I know that for some folks out there, they really always want the best quality. So, hey, just plug it into a USB 3.0 port and you'll be good to go. Yeah. I mean, but sometimes, you know, you're on the go. You don't have like a 3.0 port or you just need something quick. So having the option is pretty nice as well. Um, so, yeah. Then we have another question. Uh, Mr. Hollywood asks, camera, camera looks clean. Have you added any filters or changed any settings or is this straight out of the box? Uh, so for me, I tuned in my settings. I don't have auto settings on right now. I made it perfect for the lighting that I have at the moment. Uh, I also, I, li I really like changing my color temperature personally because I always lean towards like a warmer environment, but you can choose that. That's the really nice thing about camera hub. Uh, and then you can also then save those settings to the camera. So it's actually saved on the hardware. Uh, so I actually did that. So now if I took this camera, connected it to my laptop, you know, set it up, you know, on this monitor, maybe I'm now using my laptop to, for like a Slack call or something, those settings will be saved on the camera. Uh, but I can actually show you, I'll just turn on automatic white balance. I, I guess I, I did good picking my white balance. It actually se seemed like I, I had it pretty much almost exact what it would do for automatic. Uh, and then exposure, if I did automatic, it's kind of like going to level out for a sec, but this is what it would do for automatic settings. Um, yeah, I just, I personally like having that like moody, like a little bit more contrast, but for automatic, it seems to be kind of brightening me up a little bit. I actually really like how automatic looks right now. Um, so maybe, maybe I'll leave it automatic. And then when you, you do stuff like, you know, show something closer, it will, you know, adjust accordingly. Yeah. We can also go over uh, the settings that I have really quick. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see here. If I go, so you should be able to see my screen right now. And uh, yeah, so these are the settings that you get. So first at the top, um, there's the save button here. So uh, just like the original face cam, you can also save all the settings right onto your face cam mark two. And that way it won't reset. It won't change or anything like that. If you use it in a different app or if you unplug it or even just restart your computer. There's, you can see the zoom here. I'm at just 100%, no fa face tracking. Contrast is at 80%. You know, you can of course play around with that, add a little bit more contrast, add less. 80% is that really nice middle ground. Uh, that's also just the default. Then there's saturation. Again, that's something you, that you can play around with. Uh, you know, we've done a lot of testing to make sure uh, that the settings out of the box are uh, great. And um, 
yeah so then there's also sharpness so you can turn that down you can turn it up you know turning it up really really high i wouldn't necessarily recommend right you can kind of tell it's it's there's some like issues there. Uh, 50% is going to look great. Um, in fact, if anything, I would suggest turning it down a little bit. Um, you know, you can play around with it in your own setup, but even something like 40% or even 30 just overall makes the image a little bit you know, just softer, right? Uh, but the default there is 50, and that's what I'm going to leave it at. Uh, exposure, you can see here, these are my settings. Um, now, this is pretty much like the best. Uh, settings that you can get, right? So you've got that shutter speed of uh, 1 1 60th uh, of a second. So essentially 60 FPS and then an ISO of 100, which is the lowest. So that means it'll have the best performance. Uh, the dynamic range is set to standard. The reason I have this is because I have <laughs> two key lights and a ring light right there. Uh, this might not be what your setup looks like. So again, you can tweak all of these settings, but this is pretty much the best that you'll be able to get um, in terms of the, the settings here. Then you'll see white balance as well for me is on automatic and it's set to uh, 4400. And then the processing, I've got noise reduction on medium and anti flicker on 60 hertz. So, all in all, I'm using almost completely out of the box settings here, uh, even though they're in like manual, like here exposure. I mean, that's more or less out of the box. And then on the effects side, I'm just using the uh, the background blur. So, yeah, that is, those are the settings. Nice. So we have a question from YouTube. Uh, Dirk J asks, is it possible to circumvent the blue light that shows when the face cam is active? I thought it was hardware driven. Uh, the blue light. So that's a good question, actually. Can we still do that? No. So um, on this one, it's not currently implemented that you can turn it off. You know, that light is supposed to show when the camera is active. And, you know, we don't want someone else to be able to... I don't know, turn that off for any reason, right? Like if the camera is active on and streaming video, the blue light is gonna be on. Uh, if it's not active and you know, basically there's no application access it, accessing it, then the light is gonna turn off. Yeah, I will say though, the, the light isn't covering anything on the lens. I mean, this is this is Mark one, but it's about in the same spot. So you could in theory, if you, the light really bothers you, you could cover it. Um, so, you know, maybe some black electrical tape or something like that. Uh, would probably do the trick. And then we have a question from Brandonson who says, will the Mark II get people besides my grandmother to call me a handsome young man asking for a friend? And all I'm going to say for that is, I mean, look at, look at our video quality. It looks pretty, pretty good. I think your grandma would be impressed. <laughs> and I just want to say I'm impressed as well. You are a handsome young man. Keep, it's true. keep doing you. Go yes, out there and get him, slugger. <laughs> go, go get him, sport. <laughs> Um, then we have James uh, Icon City who asks, does it work with Prompter? And yes, it does. Actually, Phil is using it with Prompter right now. Yep. So yeah, it works with Prompter. And uh, out of the box, it works with the Universal Shroud. So you can just uh, attach it to the L bracket if you have a Prompter, uh, and then also attach the Universal Shroud. That works. We are also working on releasing a uh, 3D printed, like 3D print file so that you can 3D print your own backplate. Um, I don't know if we have plans on like selling those, but of course there's lots of people in the community, uh, who will print a black plate for you once that is going to be available. So, uh, yeah, just look out for that, but there will be a custom bespoke back plate available for the face cam mark II uh, very soon. Yeah. So, uh, there's a bunch of funny questions here that I want to answer, but I feel like I have to do the serious ones first. Um, but 608 asks, can you tell us why it doesn't have a built-in mic? But then they said Kappa. So I feel like I, 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 like they're joking, but I actually would like to talk about this because there's a really good reason Facecam Mark II doesn't have a built-in mic, which is that mics on webcams are not it. They don't sound good instead of, you know, wasting valuable hardware space and, you know, everything else to include a microphone, uh, raising the price of Facecam Mark II. We'd rather take the microphone out. You know, you, you wouldn't have liked it anyways, and it, we wouldn't have been proud of a, web, a mic on a webcam. Uh, so there's no it, mic on it. The difference yeah. is basically mm -hmm. I'm here talking to you now. My voice is clear. It's loud, hopefully. I've seen some comments about the level. I can probably bump that up a little bit. Um, it's clear. There's presence, right? I am here uh, talking to you on the video. But if it were on the webcam, well, I might be back here. So if I'm talking to you, it's probably a little bit quieter. I sound like I'm far away. It's not going to be great. Do you really want to use this? Like that's basically what what would happen, right? Because the and now especially it'd be even worse if you put it behind prompter because then the mic would be covered in glass. 
or would be covered yeah. by the the reflective glass. So that's probably not ideal either. So all in all, yeah, microphones on a webcam, if you're creating content, not great. Yeah, it's not the move. It might yep. not be the move. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, so you have to consider the proximity effect like Phil was showing. If you did have that microphone really far away on your webcam, then it's going to compensate for that by increasing the gain. Increasing the gain will increase the noise. Whereas if I have this microphone nice in front of me and, you know, any microphone in front of you will probably sound better than the webcam mic, you know, far away from you. Also, the microphone would then need to be, you know, smaller capsule or whatever to fit into the webcam, blah, 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 blah. So, so what yeah, we that's and why we, we didn't. We didn't do it. <laughs> and what we can do with that, though, is, you know, more on the production side of things, if we're not building in a webcam, uh, building in a webcam, building in a microphone into the camera, uh, that gives a little bit more wiggle room on taking the potential cost of what that uh, mic is and moving it over to other things, you know, making sure that we have a better ISP on there, making sure we have uh, better optics on there. You know, it's got our Elgato, uh, where is it? It's got our uh, prime lens. So, you know, just making... The mic is, you probably wouldn't use it anyways, right? Yeah. Cool. So then we have a question from Card Kraken who asks, how well does the camera do with close-up focus? Interested in using it for uh, pack openings where it's right behind my hands for close-up views on the cards. So we talked about the uh, fixed focus. So there is going to be a point where it's blurry, but I mean, we can do this live right now. So, you know, if I were presenting to you guys a new product, you know, that's, that's it right there. If I get it angled, right. So you can see it loses a little bit of sharpness there as it gets really, really close. Um, but if you hold it kind of at a normal distance, it'll look great. Right. So I think it's definitely still doable. Excuse me. Yeah. Here's kind of a view of the distance for that optim optima optimal, you know, focus range. So when you're really close up to the camera, I mean, it's going to be blurry. If you're a little further away, it won't be as sharp. However, this is like the, the prime range for that nice sharp view. So what you can do is if you want those close ups, just I'll hold up my my Mark one. This is my my exclude. Actually, I do think I do have a card in here. Where are my cards? Pokemon <laughs> card, magic card. What kind of card I'm is opening it? right? Now. My terror of the peaks card. Ooh. Is that not awesome? It's, it's just such a beautiful card. I love this dragon. It's so cool. So then I open Camera Hub and then check this out. You want that close up? You can read that. <laughs> I, I am zooming in all the way and you can very clearly read that. Oh God, I, I should have cut my nails before the stream. Uh, you can very clearly read the, the text on this. It's actually more impressive than I thought it would be. <laughs> that's, that's really clear. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you're doing those pack openings, you can actually be more comfortable because that camera doesn't need to be right over your hand. So you'll actually have more room to see the card as well. Uh, just do that zoom. And then, like I said, if you do save those presets, it's going to go all the way to the corner, isn't it? If you do save those presets, <laughs> you can do these really cool zooms and stuff like that and have it saved. Or let's say you show multiple cards, then you save another preset over here, and then you can kind of just pan throughout your desk. Um, so it's a pretty great solution for for pack openings and stuff like that because of that camera hub zoom. Uh, you get that really nice zoom effect. You can also and do some things really like, nice <laughs> like uh, hey, come here. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So next question. I didn't cue one, so now I'm reading. Um, Okay, think, yes, uh, Drew asks, these are settings for the device itself or are you using OBS settings? So the, most of the settings we've shown are on Camera Hub for the device itself. Yeah. yeah, and the only settings that I changed in OBS is I set it to 1080p and 60 FPS, but that's it. So I didn't actually add any filters in OBS or uh, change any colors there or anything like that. So it's more or less just add it to OBS and you're good to go. Yeah, but you can still absolutely do those filters on OBS. Um, so you can do stuff like this. That you can't you can't do this on Camera Hub, but it's not stopping me because I'm doing it on OBS. <laughs> so you could get those uh those fun zoom ins not only on uh, Camera Hub but also on OBS. And speaking of <laughs> OBS, um, one thing we also I don't think mentioned, but Facecam Mark II is a UVC camera, meaning it'll work on both Mac and Windows without drivers. So you can just plug it in, and it just works uh, with those great default settings out of the box. Camera Hub is optional, so you don't have to install it if you don't want to. Uh, I definitely recommend it, though, because then you can tweak all those settings. In fact, you could install it, 
save your settings onto the camera and then uninstall it if you really wanted to. Um, but yeah, so it'll work on Mac and Windows. Just plug it in and it'll work in basically any app that you're using. Yep. Cool. So uh, Gamer Cole asks, what's the compatibility with Stream Deck? Ah, that's a great question. So I can actually show you guys what that looks like. Uh, we're going to do this live here. So let me also pull up the Stream Deck software. So this is Stream Deck here. Uh, this is my little configuration here. Very simple, very last minute uh, as I was setting up the stream. So I'm going to cover Camera Hub like this. OK. So here you can see uh, all of the actions for Camera Hub that are on Stream Deck. So let's say I wanted to zoom in. Well, I can actually go over here. I've got a Stream Deck Plus. I can choose Adjust Camera, drag that over to the dial, select a Zoom. And now I've got a Zoom set up here. And I can simply zoom in, zoom out, just like that. I can also adjust the step size if I want to zoom in more, you know, basically faster, right? So whoa, if you get seasick, I do apologize. Um, there's other things also like the pan and tilt, right? So I can pan and tilt over if I want to, uh, just like that. And you know, I could set them up on different keys if I wanted to, uh, or on different dials. And so that's just a dial. I can also set up all of these and more on the keys. So you know, I can set up a let's say again for the zoom, uh, we can do a set camera setting here. So let's say we'll set zoom and we'll do a value of 150. You know, I tap it. It just instantly zooms in. Now, I could also do an adjust setting. So if I want to adjust the camera, and this is really cool. Check this out. I'm going to adjust the zoom again. So both of these are going to be set to zoom. And now I can set these to a vertical slider. And I'm going to set the top one to positive 5%. And I'm going to set the bottom one to minus 5%. And check it out. Now these two keys have combined into basically one virtual slider. So I can just tap on it. And as I'm tapping on it, you know, it's zooming in, and then I can zoom out again. Or if I even to visualize it a little bit better, I can even just on the dial here, I'll do a crazy zoom, uh, like 4x, you'll see as I'm rotating the dial, it's actually also changing the value right on the key. So this way, it's really nice to see, you know, if I want to be at basically half zoom, yeah, it'll be stuck between the two keys here, but you'll know exactly where it is. And you can do this for uh, any setting that can be changed. You can have this like, so if the zoom, the pan, the tilt, uh, exposure, ISO, all of that, you can always have these. You can also do it horizontally if you want to. Uh, so we can do a horizontal, just like that. You know, depending on which stream deck you have, you might want to do a different layout or how many keys you have available. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what else can you do with your uh, Stream Deck? Let's see. There's a ton of actions. Of course, you can uh, change the, uh, let's see here, like the orientation. You can change or turn on and off eye contact. You can turn on and off face tracking. Uh, there's also the backgrounds. If you want to turn on like blur or basically any of the custom backgrounds that you've added or the ones that it ships with, you can just select between them. So more or less everything that you can change within Camera Hub, you have control over with Stream Deck, which is awesome. So that is the Stream Deck demo. Oh, what's uh, what's going Hello. on here? What's going on over here? I see you, Eli, in chat asking about demos with Mark II and green screen. And while I do not have the perfect lighting for green screen right now, I got you. While Phil was yapping, Whoa. I have brought the green screen. I, I have the original one at home right now. So we're going to do a live little demo. I'm going to I'm going to green screen this for you right now. So Actually, first wait, I need it, a background. It looks what? better if I if I don't put you full screen cuz then it the yeah, screen, leave screen me takes here. up the entire Make the entire talk. frame. Right. Nice. Okay. Cool. All right, ready? First I'm going to need a background image. I have one ready. I, I prepared it before actually. <laughs> Phil Phil doesn't know this. Um but I prepared my background. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Um <laughs> Now what? So that's okay. So now we put this behind my my cam my camera mm. and then filters. And then now I'll add doo -doo. hold on. I gotta add color key, uh, color key. This is live. You're watching me do this live. And now the anticipation is building. I'm very curious okay. to see how this looks. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm doing it. I'm do we, doing do we it. Need some like. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Please. Okay. Basically, Press elevator color, music for when. Color. I'm, oh. I'm making it progress, progress, and we lower the similarity. Blah 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 blah. And now, if I increase the brightness on this key light on the right, just this one. Oh, that's the other one. This one should oh. take out some of that green. Okay, let's just go full bright, and then I'm gonna change the green again. So let me actually. Oh. You're seeing it live here. I've, you're seeing it live. Yeah, you want you want to see what it looks like. I, I I will show you what it looks like. Okay. There you go. So I would need to add one more light down here, which I don't have right now. Um, but basically, this is that is, this is weird. Can, it's like, what's weird? We're just in the same setup, basically. Oh yeah, I'm right there, Phil. Don't you see me? I'm right there. <laughs> so obviously, I mean, lighting a green screen requires you know lights to be set up, which I did not set up. I just grabbed the green screen from my closet. Uh, but basically, look look up here because this is where the lighting is is more accurate, and this is a quick demo about what it looks like with a green screen. Very yeah. cool. So yes, green screens do work. Uh, yeah, it would be really cool if I showed up and oh my gosh, I don't. We'll have to do that. We'll... Wait, what? I gotta I gotta do this right. Hold on. Oh, she's got an idea. Oh, oh, the reveal. All right. This one's a fun one, by the way. Ooh. Hey, Phil, I'm in your background. <laughs> Actually, wait, why, why is it like the settings look so good now? Wait, I'm coming back. Yeah, now it looks pretty look, good, actually. Now, now, now we're talking. I don't know what I changed, but it's it's fire now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Phil. How's it uh, going? I'm in your setup. Hi. Am I wait? I'm looking the wrong way. Here we go. I love hey. what you've done with the place, Phil. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it looks really good. So we can have yeah. a conversation like this. Does it yeah. look high at five, all realistic? Up. Oh, <laughs> nice. All right. <laughs> Very Anyways. cool. Anyways. <laughs> so yeah, you can absolutely green screen. Yeah. Does that does that prove the green screen? Did I do it? <laughs> In fact, that's something where I wonder if HDR could help out a little bit more. I'm not sure though. I haven't tested that, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna theorize to too line. much. Yeah. Uh, but okay, do we have any other questions? Oh, we got questions, Phil. <laughs> All right. So Sherples ask, what Elgato lighting would you recommend to go with the camera without breaking the bank? Well, if you're looking for a pretty simple option that also would be pretty portable as well. Uh, Key Light Mini is one of our more affordable lights. Uh, so you can have, you know, one of them set up on the side, get a nice like Rembrandt effect like lighting. Um, so like combine that with your room lighting and your face will be well lit and your, you know, your room will also be well lit. If you're looking for a bigger solution with just one light, a ring light would help there too. You get that nice, you know, ring light effect. You get the nice effect on your eye. And it would be pretty good at filling in your face without needing two lights. If you want to go all out, I have two key lights in front of me. I'm not sure your lighting, Phil, uh, but for me, I got two key lights about, what is it, 45 degrees? Yeah, for like an Ish, acute angle yeah. away from me, from the center, from the camera. What do you I've got, got a, I've got two key lights and a ring light. Wow, you got the three lights. Yep, yep. <laughs> and then no lighting behind me, and that creates a kind of a very dramatic, moody kind of moody look so oh yeah i should have turned that off don't look at it Shh, don't look at it <laughs> there's nothing Shh, nothing was no there. i'm not showing off guys uh i'm in the elgato office that's why i'm in the elgato office in munich so um i would hope there's yeah. some lights here if we didn't have lights that'd I, be a real problem i guess i technically also have a key light air because I, I love a key light air is another solution here if you're looking for like a simpler light a key light air also comes with the with this nice desk mount. So if you don't have an area to clamp, uh, this is actually a really nice solution. But yeah, technically I, I, I love the look of key light air. So I put it in the back because it's just so pretty, <laughs> so pretty. Um, but I actually do remember a question I saw earlier. I don't know off the top of my head who asked it, but face cam Mark II can be mounted on a tripod, on multi-mount. It has that same, uh, what is it, quarter inch mount at the bottom. So yep. yeah, it can be mounted. It's not only you know the monitor mount, but you can use the monitor mount if you want. Uh, or you can put it on a multi-mount, you can put it on a solid arm, flex arm, tripod, anything that has that quarter quarter inch screw. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so you can just, this is the monitor mount, you can just take it off and then you have uh, the mount point down here. 
Works with pretty much yeah. any standard camera gear that uh, uses quarter inch threading. Yeah. Also, Chad's being so nice. You guys, you guys are great. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about Facecam Mark II. I'm really glad you guys are excited too. Um, thank you guys for the the great questions so far. We've we've gone over a lot of really interesting things with Facecam Mark II, and these questions are good. Uh, so let's do some more. Uh, da, da, da. Lady Angels asks, what's the best way to learn and utilize this tool for beginners? That's a great question. So something that's actually really nice about Camera Hub software is that the settings that you can control are similar to what a camera controls are. So it's not that complicated if you've gone from like even phone camera settings going into Camera Hub. It's not that complicated to understand exactly what's going on there. Uh, my thing I'd say is you you want to avoid oversaturating over contrast. People you might like that look like when you first see it, but it, it usually is pretty intense and, you know, more, <laughs> more saturation isn't always a good thing. Uh, Phil, you've been hanging out at the beach over there. <laughs> yeah. You're looking, looking a little gray now. <laughs> there we go. Now we're back. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's pretty easy to tune in the settings. Um, you know, there's a lot that you can edit, but no need to get carried away. Just think about, you know, I, I like to, when I set my settings, I like to have a mirror on the side. Right now I have a mirror door right here. And I just like to refer to like my like skin tone, what I look like and try to replicate that with the settings. Um, also with the background as well. Uh, Phil, if you could go over a little bit about the uh, the exposure settings and you know, kind of like a way that a beginner may understand those. Yeah, there's, there's a couple uh, settings here. Let me switch over. So there's a couple settings here um, that you can control out of the gate. Uh, your Mark II is going to come in automatic exposure mode. And here it's basically just going to try and do its best with, you know, the camera's just looking at the image and going, okay, I want to make sure that, you know, it's not too bright and too dark. And then you can control that a little bit if you want to. Um, you can switch between the dynamic ranges here. It'll do a good job. Where it might have issues in this mode is if you have, let's say, like I'm wearing a black shirt right now, so it's actually overcompensating, I think, for that a little bit. It basically is detecting that there's a lot of dark around here and it's going, oh, I should probably bump up the brightness when that's actually not true, right? Like I actually am properly exposed already. Camera, unfortunately, isn't that smart just yet. Um, and so you can then, with the brightness setting, actually give it a little bit of a, uh, a hint of what it should be doing. Now, if you want to take it a step further, you can then just turn on manual uh, exposure settings. And here you have control over, like Brito was saying, the same controls that you would find on a standard camera. So you have shutter speed and ISO. Shutter speed is quite literally how often the camera is uh, closing the shutter to basically take in light. Uh, and so at this setting here uh, of 1 one sixtieth of a second, and that's a mouthful every time, uh, it's capturing, uh, it's basically closing the shutter and capturing an image 60 times a second. Uh, and this is what you will want to be at if you want a smooth 60 uh, frame per second video. You can go lower and you'll notice that very quickly, the amount of light that comes in is gonna be lowered, right? So now we're at one 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 five hundredth of a second and it's super dark so if you're using this in a really bright room or if you have a lot of bright lights on you you can use that setting however i do recommend keeping this at um, the default setting as much as you can and really first going for iso iso what that does is um and i don't know if this is a good analogy but essentially it's it's like microphone gain so with the microphone gain you can simply bump that up right you can turn that super high it's going to sound awful it's not going to be great but you're louder it's very similar to ISO. It basically just makes the micro, the camera more sensitive to light. So I can bump this up and it's essentially making the camera, like literally it's just going, oh, there's like more light. I can pull more light out. The problem is it's not actually really more light. And so you'll see now I'm overexposed. There's some noise in there. You know, there's no more detail in my forehead or anything like that. Um, and so what you'll want to do is you'll want to first make sure that you keep the ISO as low as possible. If you can, get it and just keep it at 100, perfect, awesome. Uh, then after that, you start messing around with the shutter speed uh, and you can kind of get it to that perfect level. Now, if you don't have enough light in your setup and you need to bump up the shutter speed, uh, you can do that. And by bumping up, I mean, you can make it even slower. The thing is though, you'll see, oh, I'm now like a blurry mess, right? Because it's actually capturing, what is this? It's basically in like 15 FPS or something like that, uh, if the math lines up. And even the ISO at its lowest settings can't compensate for that. So it's actually too bright, right? It doesn't, I don't need to do this. I can set it back down to uh, one, one sixtieth of a second. So 
yeah, that's kind of how that works. So uh, first, check out the ISO. I mean, number one, if you're like kind of if we go through the list of importance when tweaking a camera is first, make sure you have good lighting. Nothing can compensate for that. Uh, even a hundred thousand dollar like Ari Alexa or or you know something like that, a cinema camera. If it's in a dark room, it's in a dark room. There's no fixing that. Um, so get good lighting. You ideally want light that's coming at you. If you have a room light overhead, something like that, that'll work perfectly fine. It might not be as flattering, but it'll work. Uh, the next thing is kind of just positioning of the camera. I mean, you want good positioning kind of over you. That'll make it look more flattering. And then in terms of the actual brightness settings on the camera, keep the ISO as low as possible. Make sure that there's no noise in the image and keep it crisp. And then after that, adjust the shutter speed. So, you know, it really boils down to just lighting, ISO, and then shutter speed. Awesome. Thanks for coming and, to my TED Talk. Um, yeah. <laughs> and speaking of people who just came to your TED Talk, Nutty, thank you so much for the raid. Really appreciate it. Uh, you join right in to learn all about ISO from Phil. Uh, thank you so much for the raid. If I if I saw correctly, were you unboxing every every Elgato camera? Did you guys just watch that? Is that where you're coming from? This is a, the, the perfect raid then. Well, welcome to here where we are talking about Facecam Mark II. I should have been um, watching so yeah. that. That's probably yeah, what, what are we more doing interesting. Here? Yeah. Let's let's leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, is that correct. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, welcome on uh, in everybody from Nutty Stream. But also, since we just answered a question about like learning about how to do stuff, if you guys aren't following Nutty, please follow Nutty for great advice on how to do really cool stuff like in OBS, like just really cool things for streamers. Uh, make sure to follow Nutty. Okay. Thank you. I think we got a shout out earlier, but if not, go go click that name in chat and go follow or subscribe also on YouTube. Um, so thank you so much for the raid. Really appreciate it. Uh, I also did see uh, somebody saying, yeah, lighting is key. Lighting is absolutely key. I mean, when you're thinking about photography, right? Photo from photography comes from photon. It's all about lights, right? So the camera is capturing light. So the more light you give it to work with, the better it will be able to capture. That's just standard for any camera. It's also true for Facecam Mark II. So lighting is really important when you're talking about webcam quality. You might even be impressed with some of the webcams that you already have that maybe don't look good. If you light it better, you might get a result that you are more happy with if you are lighting it better. So yeah, the same is true with Facecam Mark II. But I also do want to highlight again, the low light performance, because if I, if I turn off all my lights and I'm like super backlit from my very bright windows over here, it's, it's it still fantastic. good. Yeah. yeah. You see the detail in my hair, which I could say personally, I've never seen in a webcam before. Uh, so I think, you know, you also will be able to get away with a little bit more with face cam mark two than you could with the original face cam when it comes to that low light settings. Um, and then also, like Phil was saying earlier, has that noise removal, which helps um, you get more noise in a camera when you get into a darker environment. So you can start adding in stuff like noise removal to assist if you can't, uh, you know, have brighter, if you don't have the ability to brighten your lighting. Yeah. Cool. So let's go to another question. Dark Lord of Caliban, which is, that's a really Ooh. cool username, uh, says, is this camera best for faces or does it work well for a work desk cam? So we we're talking about a little bit about that earlier. It has that fixed focus range, which I could show you again right here. This is the ideal range for face cam. So if you do have a top-down camera, it actually will most likely fit within this range. So you're going to be able to see what's on the desk pretty clearly. I mean, I can show you if I have something like, again, that magic card I showed earlier, which is very cool, I'll take any excuse to show it again, uh, you'll be able to see that if you are zooming into something like, let's say you're writing or you're teaching a class and you're writing on a paper, you will be able to zoom into these things and you can see that range of, it starts getting a little blurry when you get really close, but at the range you'd have it on a top-down camera, you can, you can read it. I'm also moving it so it doesn't help. My hands are very shaky all the time. So you can read it, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. Um, it would work great for a top-down camera as well. Um, and then since it has that fixed focus, you don't have to worry about things kind of like, you know, you put your hands in and now it wants to focus on your hands, not the table. Like you're gonna have actually, it's actually a really good webcam I'd say for a top-down because it doesn't have automatic focus. Uh, so you'll always have what's on the table and focus for you, you know, as long as it's not right on, like right underneath the camera. In terms of the, also just the use cases, like, you know, can I use it in an office or could I use it at home or could I use it for, I don't know, having multiple people, you know, with the uh, field of view, I think it's 82 on this one. It might be 83, it's 82 or 83. Don't quote me on that. It's one of those. Um, Quoting you. 
you can absolutely, right? I mean, I could definitely have a second person next to me. Uh, actually, if I switch over to, let's say this one right here, I could have a second person next to me and we could be, you know, have a podcast or something like that going. Um, so there's absolutely the uh, possibility of using it. You know, it doesn't just need to be in this type of environment that we're using it right now. Yeah. It's a 84 degree field of view. Uh, so you were close. Damn. Here, wait, show, show my full camera real quick. Check this out, check this out, check this out. Ready? I don't think you realize how wide this is. I literally cannot walk far enough to show you how wide this is. So it's a very wide field of view. And if you don't want that, that's when you can use the pan tilt zoom effects uh, to really you know, zoom in. And you have the option to show that wide view. It's nice to have it if you are you know, maybe doing a Just Dance stream, that wide view is really nice. But maybe if you're in a meeting, you don't want to show all your coworkers on the side. So then you can zoom in and just focus on only you like I can, can zoom in. And now it's, now it's just me. And nobody needs to know what's going on around me. It's, it's just me here in my little box. So, right. um, crazy not asks, uh, <laughs> can you demo if face cam software has built in background removal with chroma key? Uh, so that's available with, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card and Phil can show you that, uh, you can change, uh, the background. You can blur the background right now that blur effect is on. Yep. So I, I think, uh, cause there's a keyword in there saying with chroma key nowadays, you almost don't need it like these are good enough you know i don't have a green screen behind me and you can see just the background is blurred but my hand is not being blurred because these algorithms are getting so good these days uh that you can just you know if you have a compatible gpu you can just run it there um and do that so yeah it does full background replacement uh if you want to through camera hum so you can see there here i am that's a, just a still image uh i could be in an office environment if i wanted to be and uh you know, it has a little bit of trouble here or there. Again, depends on lighting, depends on how uh, busy your background is and all of that. But in general, it's it starts to look really good. And I think adding a green screen wouldn't necessarily help in this case. So, yeah. It is, yep. um, and that just comes built into Camera Hub. So uh, again, you need an NVIDIA RTX 2060 or better GPU. And uh, then you can just turn these on together with uh, eye contact, which I know we haven't really talked about uh, some of the Camera Hub stuff, but um, in Camera Hub 1.9.1, we added, or yeah, I think it was that one. No, that was, that was a previous one. We added eye contact. Uh, basically, if I turn this on, what it's gonna do is it's going to make it look like I'm looking at the camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep looking kind of straight down at my screen and I'm gonna turn it on. Did that work? Is it on? Not yet. Oh, okay. there we go. <laughs> so That's I'm looking eye around. Contact. It's like 3D scanning right now. So, you know, what what you could do with that is if you've got like a script that you're reading, again, I'm, I'm not looking at the camera right now. I'm kind of looking off of it onto like a monitor and uh, I could like look around and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, it even gets the uh, it even gets the blinking down and whatnot. Uh, it's pretty cool. So if you don't have a prompter, then you can use this. And again, I'm not looking at you guys. I'm not looking at the chat right now. I'm kind of looking off. It does. Obviously, if you move away too much, it kind of, you know, the algorithm has trouble tracking it. Uh, but if you're just in a normal, you know, you're just looking kind of at your screen uh, and presenting something or you're talking with your chat, then you can use this and uh, it's pretty cool. And now it's off. If you're, in a, if you're in a Zoom class and you want to look like you're paying attention, but you're looking off to the side to play Switch, you can do that. I've never done that before. So don't tell any of my previous professors. That never happened. In fact, <laughs> you know, stay in school. Yes. Yeah. Pay attention in your in your classes. <laughs> um, but I mean, Animal Crossing came out. I cannot be to blame if anything happened. You know, you had the doctor's it was an note, important right? Time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I had the Tom Nook note. Uh, but anyways, Commander Carl Messer asks, does it work with Windows Hello Face recognition? And it doesn't uh, because that requires an infrared sensor and FaceCam Mark II doesn't have that. Um, it also doesn't work with FaceCam Pro or FaceCam because they don't have uh, that built in sensor. Let's see another question. Is it Skype compatible, Phil? If you still use Skype, yes, it is Skype compatible. I'm not Skype compatible. <laughs> uh, boy, Skype is a name I haven't heard in a long time, but I know it's still I, I, out there. Same, so. yeah. yeah, it's 
completely valid. And yes, it does work with Skype. It works with Zoom. It works with Teams. It works with Slack. It works with OPS. It works on Discord. It works just like any other webcam. So you can use it on any program. Yep. Can I control multiple face cams on one computer or will I need another USB controller? Asks Mana Boshi. That is a great question. So like right off the bat, sure, you can plug in a couple cameras to your computer and it, it will just work. However, right, like Facecam Mark II and our original Facecam, uh, they use uncompressed video. And that uncompressed video uh, is quite heavy on the USB bus. And if you plug in two of those and two uh, USB ports right next to each other, that should still work, but it's certainly like it becomes tough if you, if, especially if you're using like a USB hub and you're connecting all of those and the USB hub as a say one five gigabit per second connection to your computer and you connect like three, then it might not work. Um, Facecam Mark II though has support for MJPEG, which drastically lowers the required bandwidth. So let's say, for example, you do end up getting three cameras, you plug them all in, one of them is freezing a little bit, uh, then you can uh, try using the MJPEG uh, codec, and then that should work again. Or maybe you have to set two of them down to that, that way they kind of uh, balance each other out. But yeah, so yes, you can plug in multiple to a single computer. Yes, the performance somewhat depends on the USB ports. Uh, it's unfortunately this these days still an issue, right? USB, USB gonna USB. And uh, yeah. Yeah, cool. So we have another question too, which is actually a great time to pull up that comparison, which is how would you compare the Mark II with the Facecam Pro? Uh, so we actually have a beautiful asset made by Marielle that Phil can pull up. There is a comparison of all the features. So obviously Facecam Pro is better if you're streaming 4K, uh, you get that 4K 60 output. But if you are you know, streaming normally, 1080p 60 is usually all you'll need. Uh, if you love doing zoom ins and you want those to be very sharp, 4K is actually really nice even if you're streaming 1080p 60 because you can zoom in and that 4K quality will let you zoom in even further. Uh, so you can import the video, for example, let's say if you want to do the zoom ins on OBS, you can put in that 4K um, video and then zoom in and retain the 4K uh, when you're doing those fun zooms while streaming in 1080p. Uh, and then Phil, if you want to go over the rest of what is the difference between Pro and Mark II. Yeah, so there's compressed and uncompressed. Uh, both of those support that, so that's great. There's that difference in the focus range, as you can see on the left side is the Facecam Mark II uh, with its 30 to 120, so it wasn't 110, it's 120 centimeters. And then on the right, you have the Facecam Pro with its 10 centimeters uh, to basically infinity, right? So just it can focus on everything. Uh, the <laughs> field of view, <laughs> there's that slight difference there, uh, up to 84 on the Facecam Mark II and up to 90 on the Facecam Pro. Of course, with both cameras, you can zoom in slightly and that you know changes the effective field of view. Uh, then there's the focus system itself, which is fixed for the Mark II and variable for the Facecam Pro. And then there's the aperture. Uh, the aperture has this weird thing called, um, but like basically the, uh, God, what, even I'm blanking now. Um, it's if the aperture is smaller, it basically lets in more light. It's sciencey stuff, but basically, if the aperture is smaller, uh, it literally means that the uh, like the iris that the uh, light comes through, that the whole the light that the, the the other way around, the hole that the light comes through is bigger, so it lets in more light. Uh, and so the aperture of the uh, Facecam Pro is uh, slightly larger than that of the uh, Facecam Mark II, so it will let in a little bit more light. Um, and then you, of course, as Brita was talking about, you have the resolution. So you have 1080p60 for the Facecam Mark II, and then 4K60 for the Facecam Pro. Um, you know, it's kind of in the name there. You have the Facecam, which is great if you are wanting to level up your quality. Let's say you're coming from a laptop webcam, or let's say you've got, uh, you know, a $30 webcam, and you kind of want to take it up to the next level, but you're not interested in necessarily spending the 300 right away for the Facecam Pro. Um, then you can get the the Mark II, and then the Facecam Pro. It's all it's going to be there for you. You know, it's it's waiting for you. Once your content bl blows up and you've got hundreds or even thousands of viewers and views, Facecam Pro, it's right there. It's waiting for you. <laughs> it's waiting for you. But if any of you guys do have Facecam Pro in chat, you should download the newest firmware because we introduced tint control on Facecam Pro, which is awesome because if you you can't you don't only control uh the like what is it the blues and the yellows you also control the greens and the pinks uh so tin control is 
controllable for Facecam Pro on Camera Hub now. So make sure to update your firmware uh, to be able to do that on Camera Hub. I think that that's very awesome. And it's not Mark II related, but if you have a Facecam Pro in the chat, well, surprise, because you got tin control. You didn't, you didn't have it when it launched, but here it is. And I think that's also something to keep in mind. Uh, we just launched Facecam Mark II. It's only going to get better. We will keep, you know, we're, our team works really hard. They listen to your feedback. They listen to the things you want. And when stuff like that can be added, they work hard to make sure that you can have those really cool features. Um, speaking of really cool features, we also have a beta going on on our Reddit. So if you like testing new cool features, you should go to our Reddit. And if you're a Stream Deck user, you should run to our Reddit. You're going to like what's going on over there. So I just wanted to mention that real quick. Yeah. And uh, oh, what, what's that? I'm getting some information. Hmm. So I just hmm. got some, some leaked information that I think we're looking at tint control for Facecam Mark II as well. I think so. That's just so what shut I, off the stream. That's, She's that's, leaking information. That's what I, I just got that over the radio. It was a little crackly. It wasn't quite clear. Maybe it's going to happen, maybe mm -hmm. not, but um, pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> we we got we to gotta make sure that we have, I have a way to, to turn off your, your mic and camera before you, you keep leaking things, Phil. You yeah. did this last stream too. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that would be really awesome. And I, I look forward to the possibility of this rumor that Phil is spreading over here. <laughs> All right, let's see. There's so many questions. I, I honestly, I don't know if we're going to be able to talk about camera hub 1.9, Phil. I, I don't know uh, if we're going to make it there. <laughs> I don't think so either. I do. I, I did see one question about, you know, are we both using face cam mark two and yep, we are both using it. So if you like what you see. We're both using Facecam Mark II. Uh, <laughs> slightly different, you know, environments here. Slightly different setups. Uh, it get, but it should give you a really nice idea of how it deals with color. What's What's really cool? Uh, oh, Elgato Julian. So, anyways, I'm out of here. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, um, thank you guys so much. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, while I'm Phil's gone, uh, let, let's talk about the giveaway, guys. Let's fill the chat. Let's talk <laughs> about the giveaway real quick. Uh, if you are on our YouTube channel, make sure to go over to our Twitch channel because we're giving away a face cam mark two right now. Also, I'm hearing another rumor that we also have a giveaway running on Twitter. Uh, some someone needs to wh whoever's doing this community stuff. Someone slow her down because she's just she's she's giving them all away. Uh, so make sure to enter the giveaway on our Twitch channel by typing FCMK2 in chat. Uh, we are going to be drawing the winner at some point throughout the stream. So <laughs> Jasmine pinned, stop the leaks. <laughs> she, she pinned it. Um, but yeah, so make sure to enter. If you already typed it once, you don't need to type it again. Uh, we'll be drawing that at some point. Don't know when. The rumors are not telling me when. They're just saying it's going on. Uh, so also someone gifted a sub to Julian. Thank you. That should hopefully distract him from the leaks. <laughs> <sighs> I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes. Okay. So more questions, Phil, I hope you're ready. We got, we got so many questions. Well, I was, I was going to sorry, I'm going to take up a little bit more time, but the thing that really kind of sets face cam mark two apart and you'll notice it is the skin tones. I mean, just yes. the, the colors, they look really natural. And in fact, so, so here's something interesting. I've seen some comparisons where folk, where you guys are looking at a face cam mark one and then a mark two and right off the bat, you might actually think like right away, oh, hey, the face cam mark one looks really punchy. It looks really like crisp and punchy. The thing is, it's actually not as kind of like accurate, right? So I mean, what you're seeing here is I've got great detail, like in the dark areas, I've got great, like just the skin tone is really nice. Um, Brito, you know, the, there's the orange back there on the uh, cool looking, uh, what is that? Don't hate me because I don't, well, that donut and also the, right? Like it just, everything looks <laughs> oh, my, my, more or less my lifelike. Yeah. My tacta bear. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, things look really lifelike. And so that comes down to the new uh, ISP or image signal processor that we're using, as well as just hours and hours and hours of fine tuning. Um, I mean, it's, it's, almost literally that like image of the scientists, you know, like, like that you see in ads, like, you know, bending over and like making some sort of thing, you know, our team spends a ton of time going through changing some values, checking if it's good, changing some more, going back, sending out a firmware update to the entire team. Like we've been beta testing, uh, you know, before launch and getting, getting feedback, like, what do you think about this? And so here's the result of all of that. 
Yeah, what you don't see behind the scenes is us collecting clips and stuff like that or being like, hey, you know, I'm noticing this and then the team goes and fixes those things. I mean, we we are we are content creators at Elgato. So sometimes in our own content, we are sneakily using these things and testing it uh, live. And as we're doing that, we're collecting feedback before it launches. So we're not waiting until after the launch to correct these things. We're we're working on that a lot before it launches, you know, the QA team, all that kind of stuff is going on before the product launches. And I, I literally, I was in, I was in Slack just being like, this thing is sick. I had like no notes when I first connected it. I was talking about it earlier when I first connected it to record some clips uh, for the website. I was like, I, I, I need to go in Slack and I need to put it in the channel so they know how much I love this because they nailed it. I really love Mark II. And I will also say, you know, when Phil's talking about that punchiness and stuff like that, I'd for this kind of video, less is more. And the more that you exaggerate those colors, the more that you exaggerate that lighting, it might look good immediately, but that's not true to life. And when you try to bring in something that maybe is a different color, it's going to be totally blown out uh, and, you know, just not look good. So with Mark II, you can get that really nice, uh, true to life color. And the skin, t skin tones as well are really good on Mark II. Um, so, yeah. Back to questions. I've heard Back we've got to a questions. <laughs> we've, we've got more than one. I'll tell you that, Phil. Um, so Agent Crew asked, what's the focal length again? The focal length. Uh, that is going to be, oh boy. Um, what is that? So the it's a 24 millimeter F 2.4 lens, prime lens, Elgato prime lens. There you go. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. There and it is. Or, or was that the question around the the actual focus distance? Because the focus distance, like the focal length, I guess if you will, um, then that's going to be thirty centimeters to one hundred and twenty centimeters, or what is that in inches? Twelve uh, inches to forty-seven inches. There you I go. I had it ready. I, w I was prepared. I did all that math in my head. Don't don't. <laughs> I need the eye contact, so it looks like I was looking here, but really I was. Yeah. Just kind of sneaking a look at the answer. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Turbo Miro asked, what is the built in privacy shutter? Um, so maybe you can show physically on yours real quick, and then I'll show yep. actively on mine. So, this is the privacy shutter here. You can see I'm going to try and get it like kind of reflective there. You can see that's it. So, I can simply uh, push that open and then close it as well. Um, I don't really have fingernails, so sometimes it can be a little difficult for me to pull it closed. But yeah, basically it's just integrated and you can just pull it in uh, and close it and then you can open it again. And Brito can do a live demo of that, what that looks like. Goodbye. Stream over. Get out of here. Whoop. <laughs> and there and there, there it is. Also, think... wait, can we just talk about the fact that the camera is like completely covered and it's not like full of noise? I feel like I've never seen that before. <laughs> Whenever I put like a lens cap on a camera, it's always like super noisy. That's pretty cool. That. That's actually pretty cool. Right? And Did you know that? I didn't know. That. Yeah. It can, also, it can be like if, kind of gone. Wait, if you're gone, does that mean chat? I mean, chat was pretty good this stream. Like they they were they were right. <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> All right. I actually, this is a really unique question I just saw come in by Killed by Boom. Will I be able to make a claymation video with this camera? So I've done stop motion animation stuff in college. I've never thought about doing it with a webcam. However, I think this would actually work pretty well because you can set the exposure to manual, you can set the white balance to manual, and then it's also a fixed focus so that focus isn't gonna be messing with you. And on Camera Hub, you can technically take you know, screenshots. So I think you actually could, and I guess maybe we should we should try it. <laughs> There's actually, uh, I mean, that just got me thinking. If you also have a Stream Deck, that could make it really easy because you can set a timer uh, for yourself, like like in a multi action. You could say, wait five seconds after I press this key, and then take the picture. Uh, or you could even say, every five seconds, you know, take a screenshot. You basically just set up a macro that goes through and does all of the does all of those. So, yeah, that totally would work. Yeah. Uh, or you can take it to another level. You can use Stream Deck Mobile, set up a Siri key, and then be like, hey, Siri, like, you know, take a pick. <laughs> I want to take a pick. Take a pick. And then it, it could it could run that multi-action too. So maybe if you're like, you're holding something up and it's just you, kind of like when I was doing my three little pigs stop motion animation college and I had absolutely nobody helping me. And I was like, just could just all 
all around the camera, just trying to get everything ready and having to hold up a paper while also pressing the shutter on my camera. You can, I think actually kind of do that hands-free. You can get really creative with this. Um, and then if you have uh, iOS device, um, iPad, OS, or um, iPhone, you can actually get six keys for free on Stream Deck Mobile. So make sure to check that out if you haven't yet. Yeah, and then you can you can try it. You can give it give it a shot. All right. For non-face content, are there only these three face cams to choose from? This question from Agent Dave Seven. Ye I guess three. I guess we technically have three at the moment. Then sure. So we have the original face cam, which is going to be available for a little bit longer, uh, depending on what store you go to. We have the face cam Mark II, which is available right now at Elgato.com. Uh, I'm not sure on the availability um, on the specific like regions uh, that you are at uh, or what stores. So you'll just have to check. Uh, again, you can do that on Elgato.com. And then we have the Facecam Pro. So yeah, technically we have three right now. Um, eventually the Facecam, the original is going to just kind of phase out, right? Uh, as we stop making it and uh, then that'll go away. But there's there's more, right? There's like Epoch Cam, so you can use your phone as a webcam, as a camera if you wanted to. Uh, or there's CamLink. If you have a DSLR, an existing camera, then you can use that. So um, there's two webcam models, and then there's a couple other uh, camera type products that we've got. And I mean, we're always looking at also kind of what's next, right? Um, we've gotten some comments around, are we going to see like a Facecam Pro Mark II? I don't know, maybe. Um, they they don't tell me anything anymore. Ever since I leaked that, they're like, <laughs> Phil, you you like basically the day before launch, like here now you get to know what it is, and that's that. So Phil, I hope you're ready after the stream. Uh, I I need to talk to you for a couple minutes. <laughs> quick quick call. We got we got to talk about about the leaking. It's becoming a problem. Hold up. What? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait! You got to do the zoom too with that. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, I'm not set up for that yet. But <laughs> uh, okay, well, you should next time. Next time, let, let this be the last time, Phil, that you don't have a zoom associated with your record scratch. It'd Sorry be fun if that was loud. The, like, oh, what? I should have used a, I should have used a oh. compressor, which you can now find on Marketplace. But yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Let's see. Any anything else? Let's go into our questions. There's there's a lot. Let's let's go to some camera hub one point nine questions real quick. Uh, which is do, 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 do. I'm trying to find a good one. Eight K cam when? Uh I mean it's ten eighty P sixty, so we're like basically there. <laughs> I kid. Uh, no, 8K, boy, that is, I don't think we're looking at 8K just yet. Certainly not oh, for a USB <laughs> camera. Techie in chat asked, what was that feature for using your phone as a webcam? Uh, so that's Epoch Cam. So if you have an iPhone uh, or I think iOS device, you can use your iOS device as a webcam with Epoch Cam. There's a free version and a paid version. The paid version is a lifetime license so if you pay for it once you get it uh, forever and then you can try out the free version to see if you like it you can use it wired or wireless uh, so let's say for example you are a painting streamer and you want to show you know some close-up details of your palette well i cannot easily just pick up my webcam and just bring it on over there so it's nice for getting like, like a second angle or even sometimes you know your main angle can be your camera like these these things are insane so might as well use it as a webcam so you can do that with epoch cam and i'm sure somebody will be putting the link in chat for you uh, so that you can go ahead and check that out uh so wheezy also asked uh is that Elgato ring light making you look so beautiful, Phil? Uh, you're making me blush. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it's certainly not me. It's the lighting. It's the camera. Mm, yeah, I think I was it Wheezy who also said, "What's my fa what's the favorite food over in Germany?" And uh, for a more fun one, I today yesterday I had a döner, but I had a Durham döner, which is basically a Duna, but as a burrito because it, it's easier to eat. So if you're ever in Germany, get a Duna and pro tip, get the Durham version, which is uh, basically just burrito form. And then today I had Leberkäse because I'm in Munich. So, you know, got to do that. Leberkäse is, God, what's the best way to describe it? it? It doesn't do it justice necessarily, but it's a little bit like uh, spam, but just better, like a lot better. And it had like cheese integrated. So, ooh, so good. 
Every time I'm out here, just I literally got like, I don't know, just a big chunk. They were like, do you want anything else? I'm like, nope, just give me more and more. And do you want any like sides? Like, nope, just a chunk of meat and cheese. Annie asks, are you German? That's a very yeah. important face cam mark two question. <laughs> uh, ich bin Deutscher. Ich kann Deutsch sprechen. Vielleicht machen wir irgendwann auch mal einen uh, deutschen Livestream. Schauen wir mal. <laughs> You're, you're, what, is there is there a word for like German and English combined? Because they're saying that sounds so weird. The words between like English and German. Because there's like Spanglish for Spanish and English. Yeah. Uh, is there a word for that? No, not not that I know of. No, we gotta make one. Dang, dang <laughs> Danglish. Okay, Julian's right. Yeah, Danglish, because <laughs> it's like Deutsch English. So Danglish. Yeah, I speak a bisschen bisschen Danglish. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I get it with my Spanglish now. We're good. <laughs> Look at us. Okay. We're I also from all over the world here. Yeah, this is it was, we could just have like three streams going at the same time. Like you just have like a German, you answer all the questions in German, then we answer them in English, then I answer them in Spanish. We can we can we can tell everybody about face cam mark too. Um <laughs> and also Marcado chat. and Marcado. <laughs> <laughs> chat, where are you from? Sound off. Where are you uh, tuning in from? Could be the country. It could be maybe a city that you're close to or something. Where where are you tuning in from? Could be your exact address. No, don't. Please do that. not. Do put not put that in chat. <laughs> That's your fault. If you do that, that is not our fault. Um, but yeah, there, is... I also did see a question about our lighting. So real quick, I have two key lights on both sides right here, and I have a. It's not really for anything. I just really like key light air, so I have it kind of there aesthetically. When you when you work at Elgato, you kind of just like. You, you you end up with a lot. So I, that's my decorative key light air. I think it's so pretty and I love warm lighting. So it's like just a nice warm lighting there. It looks really nice at night too. Um, but I would also consider the sun as part of my light right now because these windows are really bright in this room. Uh, so it's really helping a lot in brightening up the room. Uh, and then I have a Philips Hue light there uh, that I control with Stream Deck and I can do some fun effects with. Uh, and then I also have uh, the Elgato Neon Light, which is available sometimes. Oh, you don't see it. Phil, show me, show them, show them. What am I, what am I showing? Oh, there. there we go. Yeah. I got a neon light, which some of you may have. It's available on some like exclusive deals and stuff that we've run in the past. Uh, I don't think we're running anything for it right now, but keep an eye out, subscribe to our newsletter, follow our socials, follow us on Twitch. If you're not already following us, I feel like, you know, you don't make sure to like, and subscribe on YouTube. I think we're yeah, live. What? Every Wednesday. Run those things. Uh, like like weekly uh, Wednesdays rumor has it sometimes will be different depending on what's going on um, so you can you can put your tinfoil caps on that for deciding how to approach the rest of this month so yeah all right that's all I'll say for that and uh, you do have to follow our twitch to enter the giveaway so just a quick reminder about the giveaway type FC MK2 in chat if you already typed it you're good it's only on our twitch though so uh, I know YouTube, you're, you're all going to start spamming it over there. However, we're, this giveaway is only running on Twitch today. So make sure to go to twitch.tv slash Elgato and enter there. Sometimes we run giveaways on both, but today we're only running it on Twitch. Uh, we're going to be running the giveaway. I think I think I'm hearing we're going to run it soon. Oh, um, yeah, so. we're hearing something from our producers. <laughs> yeah. Este es saludándome en español. Hola, ¿cómo te estás? Yo, mi nombre es Angelica. It's good to meet you. <laughs> more leaks. Uh, Brett wants more leaks. I think we're pretty good on the questions here. I mean, I'm seeing some repeat questions. So if there's something that you answered recently that seems like it might be a basic question, we might have already answered it. Uh, so you might want to go back into the stream and kind of you know watch through and see. Uh, we'll also be posting some clips of this through out some of our different social channels and replying to some of these videos uh, from the stream today to people asking it on our socials. If you do have more questions though, hop on over to our Discord. Our community is super helpful. And then we also have our staff in there answering questions. So please join our Discord. It's awesome. Uh, and I also did want to take a moment. I want to rally everybody together. I need all of you really quick. All right. Because you may be like, what, what is this? This is the Elgato stream. Where's where's the pink haired girl? Where is Jasmine? It's Jasmine's birthday today. What? So I'm going to need everybody in chat to spam some happy birthdays uh, for Jasmine. 
happy birthday, Jasmine. We appreciate you so much. Everything you do for our community is just so incredible. Your passion for Elgato, for streaming, for VTubing, for everything, it just means so much to all of us and it makes Elgato better and you are incredible. If you guys don't know Jasmine, she is the best. She is literally one of the most incredible people I've ever met. And I'm sorry she's not on the stream today. I know you would prefer her over me. I understand. Uh, Jasmine you got is just stuck that with great, us, so. unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Happy <laughs> birthday, prepare, Jasmine. Like, <laughs> happy birthday song to play. But yes, everybody in chat, thank you for saying happy birthday to Jasmine. Uh, she is an absolute rock star on our Twitch channel, on our Discord, on our socials. When you see someone replying to you, it might just be Jasmine. So Serious shout out to Jasmine and happy birthday. <laughs> and you should give yourself a shout out if you want. <laughs> All right. That is a lot cool. of birthdays. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So well, is it that being said, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're yeah. getting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It machen wir. might be Jasmine's <laughs> birthday. <laughs> <laughs> might be Jasmine's birthday, but somebody else is getting a gift today because she's not allowed to enter this giveaway. She already, she, she already has a mark too. Uh, so we're going to start running the giveaway in a couple seconds here. So this is your last chance to enter. Again, if you're on YouTube, you'll need to go over to our Twitch. Uh, so twitch.tv slash Elgato, type FCMK2 in the chat. Make sure you also read the terms. There are some uh, places that won't be eligible for this giveaway. So make sure to check that out if you think your region might be affected because uh, unfortunately, if you do win, we'd have to, you know, re-roll. So make sure to enter, and you do need to say something in chat if you do get drawn. So hearts in chat for everybody here. I this is trade awesome. I trade trade offer. You more type <laughs> FC MK two or Facecam MK two, and uh, that's what you give us, and we give you possibly a Facecam Mark two. Isn't that a pretty sweet deal? That's all it takes. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. And if you don't happen to win this giveaway before you uh, you leave angrily, I will tell you we are also running another giveaway on our Twitter. Uh, so we posted that, I think, almost exactly one week ago, and it ends tomorrow. So if you do want to enter for another chance to win uh, or you know, you just you want to enter both right now, make sure to check out our Twitter for that as well. Um, and then also while, while you're at it, check out our TikTok, our Discord. All of them. I, I, if I'm on the stream, I'm gonna I'm gonna take my chance to talk about all their socials. Um, so you know, make sure to follow all their socials. Let me see if I can find a drum roll, real <laughs> a drum. Oh roll yeah, real get us quick. a drum roll. Uh, uh. Okay, this is a seven second one, and I yeah, I'm gonna turn down the volume. I know. Uh, gonna com <laughs> compress that. All right, let's see. Got it. Got it. Got it. Sound effects and. All right, we have a drum roll with a cymbal crash at the end. Just pick that up from Marketplace super fast. All right. And I'm just going to turn that down a little bit. So, My ear balls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Are the producers ready with the giveaway? A countdown? Should we do the countdown? Do the countdown. All right. Or actually, I guess the drum roll does it. No? I don't know. How do we do this? Is it countdown? Chat, the drum you do roll? the countdown and the drum roll will be the stream. Okay. So it's you seven guys seconds. gotta do some good counting. Good luck. Okay. It's already bad counting. All right. I'm gonna hit it. On your numbers. I'm hitting it. Draw the winner. Where is it? Where is oh. the winner? We Wompy. Wompy. Wompy with an I, W O M P I. We're looking for you because you won. Yo, oh, yo, Wompy says yo. Awesome. All right, congratulations, Wompy. You are the winner of a face cam Mark II. Congratulations. Uh, how does that work? I think we get in touch with you after the live stream. Yes. Um, somebody will reach out to you uh, very soon after the stream or possibly even right now uh, since it's Jasmine because we'll be reaching out to you. Um, but pretty soon you should get a message on Twitch. Make sure your DMs are open or else you will not be able to DM you. Um, so yes, that's all. Congratulations, Wompy. You won a face cam mark too. And you too will look this good soon. <laughs> and whoa, we just got a... Uh... Wow, Wompy's been following since 2014. What? 
What? Have we, have, has our Twitch even been around since 2014? Oh, that's wow. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, very much deserved then, Wampy. Very cool. Thank you for sticking awesome. with us. Yeah, thank you. And, and, and we appreciate you being a member of our community. We're so excited for you to have face camera too. Uh, so that being said, thank you all so much for tuning in today. Uh, these streams are always like just awesome. Uh, we love hearing your feedback on these streams, the things that you like, the things that you want to see more of. Uh, so make sure to follow our Twitch uh, and then make sure to join our Discord as well our communities in there talking about all things streaming. There's like a live now section where you can post your live or your streams when you go live. Uh, and sometimes we actually go there and we watch them and we may or may not drop subs. Again, the rumors, the rumors, there's so many rumors for like in this chat, what, what's going on here? Um, but yeah, so make sure to join you. You'll, you'll want to be there. Uh, but that being said, we will, I think, go ahead and send this over to our raid, uh, to a raid now. Um, we do have someone in mind. I'm good with that, Jasmine. I'm very happy to raid that individual. I think, I think that would they, be very fun. Didn't they also just have a big day, like a very big day, in fact? I think that person just they got did. married. I think they just got married. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So we should do our raid message. Like, what? What, what do you say to someone who just got newly, married? Newlywed. That's a... will, you, will you marry me? We can all propose to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, so we're raiding Mr. Greggles. Uh, so make sure to join us over there. Mr. Greggles is awesome. Some super cool streaming tech. So if you, if you like nerding about like really cool things that streamers do and some really unique like effects with cameras and stream decks and all that stuff, Mr. Greggles is awesome. Uh, and then if you like drumming, you follow us, follow us on this raid. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. If you want to learn more about Facecam Mark II, uh, you can check out our socials for more content. You can check out our website. Uh, the team does an incredible job at filling all these pages on our website for these products with everything you need to know and more. Uh, so make sure to check that out. And if you have any further questions, always feel free to reach out to us on any of our platforms to ask. Uh, but yeah, that being said, the raid's starting soon, Phil. Do you have anything left to say? Uh, if you want to check out early features, <laughs> give feedback that like sometimes we patch in or add in literally a day or two later, go to our subreddit, check out the latest, uh, software betas there. We just released the stream deck 6.6 .6 beta, which has, and this is, that. this is so cool. It has pinned actions. You ever thought of like having an action that is always in the same place, no matter what folder or what page you go into. Oh yeah. You can do that now. It's so cool. So yeah, check it out. And that's not even it. There's even more stuff like full canvas wallpapers across every key. Super cool. The, this is this is stuff. I, I bought my first stream deck in 2017 before working Elgato, before being Elgato partner, before everything. And this is stuff I've wanted for so long. And I'm so excited. I am stoked for this update so if you want to test it make sure to go over to our reddit um and i think the raid needed a little restart i think we could go ahead and raid at this point whenever we're yeah. good yeah yeah thank you oh, yeah. thank you da for watching mic drop dating explain said when i think to the betas <laughs> right now right now you can you can check it out right now bye bye everyone bye have a good one all right i'm hitting the end thing do it